Hello my motor enthusiasts. The heat is on at the Italian Grand Prix, and it's not just the scorching 34 degrees Celsius. Indeed, Enzo, and the track at Monza has seen some controversial changes this year. How are they shaping up? The new flatter curbs are really putting the cars to the test. Early on, we saw Andrea Kimi Antonelli set a blistering pace on soft tyres, only to crash out spectacularly at the Parabolica. A rough start for the rookie on his Formula One weekend debut, then? Quite so. But the excitement didn't stop there. Lewis Hamilton topped the charts in the second practice, closely tailed by Norris and Sainz. And what's the word on the tyres? I hear graining is a big issue this year. Absolutely, the hot attempts and track changes are causing severe graining on both the soft and medium tyres. Teams are really having to rethink their strategies, possibly even considering a shift from a one to a two-stop strategy. That's going to shake things up. And with the team so closely matched, it sounds like we're in for an enthralling race. Hello there. I'm your host, Enzo, coming to you live with all the Formula One insights you crave. And I'm William, at your service. You're tuned into F1 Motor Fever podcast, bringing you the latest and greatest from the world of motorsport. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our high-octane episodes. Absolutely, and today we've got a scorcher of a show lined up. Let's put the pedal to the metal. Today's practice at the Italian Grand Prix really turned up the heat, didn't it? With ambient temperatures reaching 34 degrees Celsius, a whole 3 degrees hotter than last year's race at Monza, and track temperatures even higher, it's setting a blistering backdrop for the race strategy. Absolutely, and it wasn't just the mercury that was rising. The newly flattened curbs at Monza are also making headlines. It looks like they're really affecting the driver's approaches, especially around the Ascari chicane. Speaking of driver approaches, Andrea Kimi Antonelli's debut was quite the spectacle. Started off strong in the first practice session, topping the timesheets early on, but then that crash at the Parabolica, quite the drama for his first Formula One weekend. Indeed, a promising yet turbulent start for him. And there's trouble in the air for Mercedes too, I hear they are struggling with a severe seat heat issue during the second practice session. That's right, and it's more than just discomfort at stake, it could potentially affect performance if it's not sorted out quickly. Meanwhile, Red Bull, despite not showing much in terms of performance runs today, seem to be in a much happier place compared to last week at Zandvoort. It's intriguing how every race unfolds a new chapter. The changes at Monza, the intense heat, and these unexpected issues are all setting the stage for what's shaping up to be a riveting race day. Without a doubt. And with the teams pushing their cars onto these new curbs, it's going to be fascinating to see how strategies and car setups evolve over the weekend. Full throttle. What a scorcher of a session it was in FP2. Lewis Hamilton really set the bar high, leading the timesheets with a 1 minute 20 seconds 0.738. Indeed, and let's not overlook Lando Norris. Just a whisker behind Hamilton with a gap of 0.003 seconds. It's remarkable how tight the competition is looking. Absolutely, those gaps are minuscule. And Carla Sainz isn't far off the pace either, clocking in at 1 minute 20 seconds 0.841, just a smidge over a tenth of a second behind Norris. The field is incredibly close this year. And speaking of close calls, Kevin Magnussen's crash at the Lesmo 2 barriers brought an abrupt end to FP2. That must have thrown a few spanners in the works for Haas. Definitely, and it wasn't just Haas feeling the pressure. The incident with George Russell's W15 and Andrea Kimi Antonelli earlier had Mercedes scrambling to repair damages, which meant Russell had to run a much different plan for the rest of the session. Times like these really test a team's resilience and adaptability. Interestingly, despite the disruptions, Russell managed to pull a commendable time towards the end, moving up to sixth place. It just goes to show, in Formula One, it's all about how you handle the pressure and adapt to the circumstances. With the field this close, any slip can cost dearly, but likewise, a well-timed lap can make all the difference. Let's see what the race day brings. Full throttle. Moving over to Oscar Piastri's attempt today, he was on a promising run, wasn't he? Set personal bests in the first two sectors but lost a significant chunk of time with that oversteer snap at the third Ascari apex. Ended up 120 thousandths of a second off Hamilton's pace. That's a tough break for Piastri. The thin line between pushing the limits and overshooting them seems to have caught him out. What do you think that tells us about the handling of the cars this season? Well, it's clear that the cars are incredibly sensitive to driving inputs, especially with the current tyre compounds. Piastri's snap shows how a small error can cost dearly, particularly when drivers are trying to maximize every sector. 
and then there's Max Verstappen, who had to correct and oversteer himself to avoid a similar fate to Antonelli at Parabolica. With these incidents, do you reckon the teams will be adjusting their strategies for the race, especially considering the tyre management issues seen today? Absolutely. Tyre management is going to be crucial, especially with how quick the soft C5 tyres are wearing down. The teams will need to be strategic about when to push the cars and when to hold back to preserve the tyres for crucial moments of the race. Speaking of strategic adjustments, Sergio Perez's gearbox issue must have thrown Red Bull a curveball. Restarting after the red flag only to end up off the pace must be frustrating. How significant is setting up the car quickly in situations like these? It's immensely significant. The tight schedule means teams often have to make quick fixes, which can lead to issues like Perez experienced. It's a delicate balance between speed and thoroughness. Ferrari seems to have managed a better setup, slotting into third and fifth just before the stoppage caused by Magnussen's shunt. With all these challenges, how important is it for the teams to gather and analyze data between sessions? It's absolutely vital. Every piece of data is crucial. Like Mercedes analyzing Antonelli's high speed through Lesmo 2, which was astonishing, but also a clear indicator of why his tires gave up so quickly. Toto Wolff's remarks about preferring to slow someone down rather than speed them up highlights the unique challenges rookies face and the steep learning curve in Formula 1. Indeed, it's a fascinating blend of raw speed and strategic depth that makes each session so unpredictable and thrilling. Let's see how the teams adapt and who gets their calculations right on race day. Full throttle. Now, Helmut Marko's comments on Verstappen's performance bring an interesting angle to the data we've seen from FP2. Despite a conservative engine mode, Verstappen was only two tenths behind Norris. That speaks volumes about the potential waiting to be unleashed in the Red Bull garage. That does sound promising for Red Bull, especially after the balance issues they faced in Zandvoort. How do you think this change in engine mode will impact their strategy going forward? It's likely a strategic move to keep some cards close to their chest while also preserving the engine for when it really counts. This could mean we'll see a significant step up in qualifying and the race, possibly putting Verstappen in a strong position to challenge for the top spot. And looking at the long-run averages, Red Bull topped the charts with the longest average stint, which is crucial given how the new track surface is playing havoc with tyre graining. What's your take on how the teams are managing these challenges? The new surface combined with the hotter temperatures is really testing the team's tyre strategies. The severe graining on the softs and mediums implies that the teams need to be extra cautious with their tyre management. It's intriguing that the hard compound tyres are being saved, likely indicating a strategic reserve for race day where durability will be crucial. With the team so closely matched, does the long-run performance give us a better indicator of race day potential than the shorter, more explosive qualifying runs? Absolutely, especially in conditions like these where managing tyre wear and understanding the long-run behaviour of the cars on a new surface becomes essential. Those long runs can give us a more realistic preview of what to expect in terms of race pace and tyre sustainability over a stint. And with all the teams being so closely packed, any slight advantage gained from better tyre management or a more efficient engine mode could make a significant difference, couldn't it? Definitely. It's all about the marginal gains at this level of racing. Whether it's a tweak in the engine settings or a slight improvement in how the tyres are managed across a stint, these factors could very well dictate the podium come race day. Red Bull's performance today certainly gives them a bit of an edge, but as always, it's anyone's race. Full throttle and may the best team win. Shifting our focus to Ferrari, it appears Leclerc has been pushing harder than most, which has unfortunately led to a significant tyre graining issue. However, he seems quite content with the car's performance, noting that the upgrades are working as expected. It's always a balancing act, isn't it? Pushing the car to its limits while trying to manage the wear and tear. How do you think this strategy will play out for Ferrari in the long run? It's a gamble, indeed. If Ferrari can manage the graining issue effectively, those upgrades might just give Leclerc the edge he needs. However, it's essential they keep an eye on the long-term effects of pushing the tires too hard too early. Speaking of tire management, Mercedes is also treading cautiously after their experience last week. There's an interesting point about the W15s, with potential high-temperature spikes due to plank rubbing. They are considering raising the car slightly. What are your thoughts on that? That's a crucial tactical adjustment. The plank rubbing not only affects the car's temperature but can also slightly reduce performance on long straights and curbs, especially with the recent track changes. Adjusting the car's height might just alleviate these issues and help them maintain a competitive pace. With the track conditions expected to improve and no rain forecasted, do you think we might see a shift from the traditional one-stop strategy to perhaps two stops, as suggested by the graining issues observed? Definitely a possibility. The severe pit lane penalty does complicate things. 
It's a high-risk, high-reward scenario where managing pit stops effectively could be as crucial as the race pace itself. Teams will need to be very strategic about their tyre usage to maximise their race potential. And finally, with Hamilton looking to impress at Monza, do you think Red Bull and McLaren might disrupt his plans during qualifying? It's going to be a tightly contested qualifying session. Given the current data and the performances we've seen today, both Red Bull and McLaren have the capability to stir the pot. It'll be fascinating to see how Hamilton handles the pressure and whether he can secure a front spot to appease the Tifosi. Indeed, it's shaping up to be an intriguing race weekend. Let's keep an eye on how these strategies and adjustments play out in tomorrow's sessions. William, fancy having a butchers at some of the online banter regarding a recent Formula One incident? Right, here's the scoop. Space Reptile, or should I say, Samuel Peter, posted about a mishap during the first practice session, saying, red flag, Antonelli crashes in FP1. Now, the response online has been quite a mix of humor and analysis. Oh, go on then. What are people saying? Well, one user, Cesar Petre, found the timing quite amusing. He said, quote, the timing was hilarious on Sky, with interviews of other drivers praising him and all the good stuff, only to immediately cut to him in the barriers, unquote. Talk about bad timing. Exactly. And it gets better. Loco Rococo, or Lucas Rochester, remarked about the quick change in commentary tone on F1 TV. One minute they were all praises, and the next, it was criticism. He said, quote, F1 TV changed their tune very quick. One minute it was, wow he's on it already, amazing. The next that was the wrong approach, unquote. He went from hero to zero in no time, then? Precisely. And Kolek, now known as Kevin Cole, chimed in saying the way they were praising him after that first flying lap aged so badly. He jested it was like going from Ascari to De Cesaris really quickly. That's some high-speed commentary flip there. Indeed. And to add a cherry on top, East America said, quote, that was gold. Will really cooked him, unquote. Meanwhile, Mayor White Shark found Buxton's comments hilarious. It seems like a classic case of the commentator's curse striking at just the wrong moment. Absolutely, and Lost Terminators, or Lester Thomas, pointed it out too. He said, quote, bloke got hit with the commentator's or broadcaster's curse 10 minutes into his career, unquote. And adding to that, Gold Electric noted the crowd's reaction, saying you could hear the cheers moment. Nothing like a live audience to add to the drama, eh? True that. And to wrap it up, Fun Master Jerky, or Jeremy Funk, brought in a bit of humor by saying it went from drivers praising him to him binning it to Mick Schumacher in Merck gear. Though he later clarified it was just a joke. Quite the lively discussion there. It's fascinating how one moment in racing can spark such a variety of reactions and comments, isn't it? It really is. Shows you just how passionate and attentive the Formula One fanbase can be. Thanks for tuning in to F1 Motor Fever podcast today. We explored the twists and turns of the latest developments in Formula One, from tyre strategies to unexpected crashes in practice sessions. Your presence and engagement make this journey worthwhile. Don't forget to subscribe and activate notifications, so you're always in the loop with our updates. Feel free to share our channel with your mates and across social media, every like, comment, and share supports us greatly. And remember, laughter might be the best fuel, but your subscriptions are what keep our engines running smoothly. We're broadcasting daily, so you won't want to miss what's coming up. There might be some surprises along the way that'll really rev your engine. We're truly grateful for your support and can't wait to bring you more thrilling F1 content. It's been a pleasure discussing all things motorsport with you today. Aye, and keep those comments coming. It's always a treat to see what you all think. Cheers for being such a fantastic audience. Until next time, pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road, our channel's content is pure gold.